In this video, I would like to show you how to solve rational equations that lead to linear equations. Okay, so just like before, we have fractions here and I want to clear the fractions. The only difference is now that I have x's in my denominator. So I need to figure out what 2x, 9, 18, and 3x all divide into evenly. And so my least common denominator is going to be 18x because 2x divides into 18x, 9 divides into 18x, 18 divides into 18x, and 3x divides into 18x. So to start off, we're going to multiply everything by our least common denominator. So I'm going to write 18x over 1 times 5 over 2x. And then I'm going to do that for each term in my equation. 18x over 1 times 8 over 9 is equal to 18 over, 18x 18 over 1 times 1 over 18. And then minus 18x over 1 times 1 over 3x. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all this and clean it up, and I'm going to end up with a linear equation with no fractions. Okay, so I can cross off here using my properties of multiplying fractions. I can cross off the 2x and the 18x, and I'm left with 9 in the numerator. So I have a 9 times a 5. That leaves me with 45. Then over here, I can cross off the 9 and the 18, and I'm left with the 2. So that leaves me with 2x times 8. So that gives me 16x. Now, for the next step, over here on the other side of the equation, I can cross off my 18s, and that leaves me with x times 1, which is x. And then for my last multiplication, I can cross up the, the 3x and the 18x, and I can make that a 6 up here. So that gives me a minus 6 times 1, which is a minus 6. Now, from here, I'm just going to solve it like I did before. I want to make sure that I get all my x's on one side and all my constants on the other, so that I can divide by my coefficient of x and finish the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I'm going to finish over here because I'm running out of room. So that leaves me with 45 minus 17x is equal to negative 6 because that x and the negative x add to give me 0. The next step is I'm going to subtract 45 from both sides. So that's going to leave me with a negative 17x is equal to a negative 51. And when I divide both sides by 17, I get x is 3. Then, of course, you want to go back in and check your answer. You always want to make sure you do that. If I go back and check, I'll find that it works, but I'll leave that to you. The next example B, same idea. I want to make sure that I multiply by my least common denominator in order to clear the fractions. Now, something to notice that I forgot to mention in the previous example, we cannot divide by zero. So, before you start these problems, I want to make sure that I write down the values of x that we cannot have. I cannot have x is equal to 0 because as soon as I divide by 0, that becomes undefined. So in this example here, I want to write down that x cannot be equal to negative 4 because if I plug in negative 4 for x, that gives me 0 in the denominator, and I can't have that. That's undefined. Okay, so to start off, my least common denominator here is x plus 4. So I'm going to multiply everything by x plus 4. So I'm going to take x plus 4 over 1 times 3 over x plus 4 minus x plus 4 over 1 times 7. I'm going to put it under 1 so I line everything up. And then I'm going to have x plus 4 over 1 times a negative 4 over x plus 4. 
Now when I multiply this, things start dropping out so that I get whole numbers or integers um, instead of fractions. So I can cross cancel here. I can get rid of my x plus 4. So x plus 4 over x plus 4 is 1, so I don't need it anymore. So I'm left with just 3. Over here, when I multiply x plus 4 times 7, I'm going, nothing cancels. Remember, this negative gets distributed as well. So I have a negative 7x. And then I have this negative and this 4. So that gives me a negative 4 times 7, which gives me a negative 28. Okay, now for the other side of the equation, I can cross off my x plus 4s, and I'm left with just negative 4 over 1, which is negative 4. And now I've gotten rid of all my fractions, so I can finish from here. So I'm going to combine my like terms, because I have some like terms here on the left-hand side. I can add my 3 and my negative 28. So I have a minus 7x, and that gives me a minus 25 is equal to negative 4, because I combine that 3 and the negative 28. Okay, to finish up here, I'm going to add 25 to both sides. I'm left with 7x is equal to, and that gives me a 21 positive. 25 and a minus 4 gives me a positive 21. And then when I divide both sides, by negative 7, I get that x is negative 3. Now I'll leave it to you to check it, but I also want you to verify that it doesn't equal to this thing over here that we said it cannot be equal to. If I came out with a negative 4, then I would know that this was no solution because I can't plug negative 4 back in and get um, a true statement. Okay, in the last example, I noticed that I have an x plus 2 down here, an x minus 2, and an x squared minus 4. This x squared minus 4, if I factor it, can be written as x minus 2, x plus 2. So right away, I know that I cannot have 2 or negative 2 as my answer because that would give me 0 in the denominator. Now to find my least common denominator, I just factored the denominator um, x squared minus 4 into x minus 2x plus 2. Let me fix that. Um, and if you notice, x plus 2 and x minus 2 are both factors of x squared minus 4. So my common denominator, least common denominator, is going to be x minus 2, x plus 2. So that is what I'm going to multiply everything by in order to solve this. Okay, so I have x minus 2, x plus 2, all over 1, and I'm going to multiply that by my 7 over x plus 2. Then I'm going to add that to x minus 2 times x plus 2, all over 1, times 5 over x minus 2. And then one last time, I'm going to take x minus 2 times x plus 2 over 1 and multiply that by 10x minus 2 all over x plus 2, x minus 2. That's the x squared minus 4 factored. Okay, what we have left... Let's see, if I look at this one here, I can get rid of my x plus 2, and I'm left with 7 times x minus 2. So that gives me 7x minus 14, because I have to distribute the 7, the 7 times the x and the 7 times the negative 2. Then here, I can cross off my x minus 2s, and I'm left with 5 times x plus 2. So that gives me a 5x plus 10. And on the right hand side of the equal sign, I can get rid of all of it, and I'm left with 10x minus 2. And now this makes it a lot easier to solve. So I'm going to combine my like terms. I have a 7x and a 5x on this side. That gives me a 12x. 
I have a minus 14 and a positive 10. That gives me a minus 4. And then on this side, I don't have anything to combine, so I'm just going to carry down the 10x minus 2. Now, the next step is to get my x's together on the left and my constants together on the right. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides and then subtract 10x from both sides. That will give me a 2x on this side. The 4's disappear because that gives me 0. And then I have a 10x and a minus 10x on the right hand side. Those give me 0. And then I have a negative 2 and a plus 4 which gives me a positive 2. So to finish this up, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to get that x is equal to 1. And I'll leave it to you to check it, but we know that this doesn't interfere with our values that x cannot be. I know I can't have x is negative 2 or positive 2, because that would give me 0 in the denominator, so I don't have to worry about that problem. Um, so, But I'll leave it to you to check to make sure that works.